The following podcast is a deep, shallow dive production. And you're going to love it. Okay, let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope you had a good day yesterday. All right, I seriously hope you guys got a chance to listen to the entire episode from Tuesday, episode 217. Honestly, I really enjoyed really bringing that content to you guys. And for those that did not listen, I highly recommend you go back and listen. But the interview with Professor John Mearsheimer and Professor Jeffrey Sachs with the All In Podcast guys, again, I, I really, I really thought that was one of the best sort of I guess, analysis of what's going on geopolitically. And again, like I talked about during the episode, you know, it was, it was pretty interesting for me to see how much, you know, those four guys whom, by the way, this all in summit that they did in San Francisco, I mean, this had really, really heavy hitters at it. You know, JD Vance was there. Elon Musk was there. I actually listened to Elon's session yesterday and I was going to kind of do the same thing that I did with Jeffrey Sachs and John Mearsheimers but you know what the Elon session wasn't that interesting it really wasn't and there were a couple other sessions I'm waiting to listen to JD Vance's and see if that's worth bringing on but you know it's funny I was I like listened to the Elon one and I thought you know what I don't really think you guys will get a lot out of that and even in the session with Mearsheimer and Sachs. I mean, you know, I think it was Jason Calacanis said like, oh my God, this is like the best panel I've ever been on. So anyway, it was a really good episode. Go back and listen to 217 if you didn't. And otherwise, all right, let's move on. Hurricane Milton. I know it's crazy. I've uh, been checking in on a few different friends in Florida to see, you know, how, how everybody's doing. But I will tell you, this is this is pretty interesting and I'm going to I'm going to talk about it today cuz I think it's worth talking about but there is a clip from 9 years ago on CBS that has garnered like like several million of several millions millions several million views <laughs> over the past 4 or 5 days and this is coming on the heels of obviously Hurricane Helene and now Hurricane Milton so Give this a listen, and afterward I'll I'll share. I did have a discussion with with a friend of mine who was one of the people that posted it, and he's got a he's got a pretty big following. And I'll talk about kind of what he said, but this is worth listening to. And remember, this is nine years ago. So this is an interview from nine years ago on CBS. You know, they were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Professor, nice to see you. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead Instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental. However, in the laboratory so far it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams, by firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War, to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with, alleged with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're bringing in the laws of physics rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> we're actually using trillion 
million watt lasers yeah. now. And in the laboratory, sure enough, they precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity yeah. down, the, down the beam. So what does it mean for drought areas that, that need to have rain for crops? And if they don't have them, uh, there's in the consequences of famine. Well, the bad news is if it's a clear blue sky, it's not going to do anything at all because it only takes water vapor that's already in the air and condenses it. However, for floods, for agriculture, for farmers, for people planning wedding parties, uh, football <laughs> games, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. Incredibly interesting. Professor Micho Kaku, thank you so much. All right, really quick. I know that was a long clip. Just the most important part flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. All right, so check it out. So when I texted with my buddy, he wrote me, a few years ago, I personally had the privilege of touring the UAE's National Center of Meteorology in Abu Dhabi. Their cloud seeding technology releases salt particles into clouds to force rain, a practice that's almost perfected in creating storms, but far less effective in stopping them. The UAE uses aircraft, Doppler radar, and weather stations for this purpose, showcasing how advanced weather control can be. Now, again, remember, he's talking about the, the, the United Arab Emirates. So if they're having that capability seemingly perfected, you know, what do you think the United States has? All right, let me read the rest of what he wrote me. He said, interestingly enough, we were told that this tech is now in the hands of private companies worldwide, including in the U.S., where it's used in the Midwest. By allowing private companies to operate this tech, government can distance themselves and claim deniability when questions, er when questions arise about weather modification. All right. Anyway, you know, cloud seeding and causing rain, obviously that's very different than the concept of a hurricane in terms of the violence and all that. But again, man, anything is plausible in my opinion. Anything is plausible. So I did want to, I did want to play that for you guys. And mainly, you know, because like I said, I mean, that CBS clip that thing between what I've seen on Instagram and then what I've seen on TikTok, it's been viewed and shared like over 15 million times. So that's a big number. So I thought that would be, you know, worth discussing or at least listening to. All right. Topic change. I completely forgot to play this clip, but I did want to play it because again, we've talked a few times over the past, you know, several episodes about this whole concept of like, Dick Cheney and his daughter, Liz Cheney, fully endorsing Kamala Harris and, you know, the concept of the Uniparty and, you know, the Jeffrey Sachs and John Mearsheimer talked about it in, in the all in podcast episode and all that. And so somebody had sent me this and actually it was, it was funny. It was before, before the episode from the other day, but it kind of reaffirmed. And this buddy of mine is like, man, you think... You think you think I'm a theorist about this stuff? This dude is like next level, but he he sends me a lot of amazing stuff that that I don't find. So give this a listen, and this is Liz Cheney with a collection of clips as recent as last year, but basically spanning like maybe the past four or five years. So this, this is this is a, col a, col a collection, but again, this is interesting. Can you talk to me kind of uh, your thoughts on the uh, on Joe Biden naming Kamala Harris as his running mate? Her views are so radical um, that just from a political standpoint, it was a surprising pick to me. So I think in addition to the fact that she would be a terrible vice president policy-wise for the country, it tells us something about Joe Biden. Uh, and it's very clear. She is uh, a radical liberal. She's somebody that uh, has said we ought to spend $32 trillion on Medicare for all. Uh, if you look at her record as well in California, uh, she did, in fact, uh, essentially ban gun sales with executive action. And she threatened during the primaries to do the same thing if she's elected, if she, if she were elected here. So I, I do think the American people are going to take a look at this record and realize she is very much a radical liberal. 
really quick, again, my point in playing this is not, not even really the content of what Liz Cheney is saying negatively about Kamala Harris, but just how negative that content is. And then now that, you know, again, the Cheneys whom, you know, are part of this uniparty 100% and they realize that Trump is not whom is in their best interest. It's crazy. The about face that she and her dad have done publicly every single day. The Democrats tell us what they would do in, as Kamala Harris put it yesterday, quote, a Harris administration with Joe Biden. (laughs) They would defund our police, dismantle our freedom, destroy our history, and abandon our founding values. And every day you see the damage of years of Democrat policies. The president has said Vice President Harris is in charge of the border. Vice President Harris said she was not in charge of the border. Uh, Nobody seems to be in charge. She hasn't been there. And we have a humanitarian and national security crisis and, and health crisis unfolding there. All right. Again, my point of that is is more to just call out what a clown Liz Cheney is and, quite frankly, her dad, more than anything. I I don't even care if you agree or disagree with everything she said about Kamala Harris, but but you can't You can't have that visceral and vitriol of a stance. And ironically, everything in those clips pretty much aligns with everything Trump has said. So how do you how do you then completely 180 and endorse her versus going with the person that is in your party and that, quite frankly, everything you said aligns with. All right. So again, just just think about these people, man. They just have their best interests in mind. All right. Another topic change. I'm going to play this clip because honestly, I, I couldn't even believe it was on Fox News because Fox News during the past one year, I mean, they absolutely never have played anything that really was was viewed as pro-Palestinian because again, Fox is completely aligned with the evangelical Christian right, which is completely aligned with Israel. And so this to me was pretty shocking that their reporter would would basically create this segment and it was even more shocking that they played it and then even more shocking is obviously the content but if this is coming from Fox of all places which again like I said in the past 1 year I could probably count on one hand how many times they've they've even even covered the Gaza situation with empathy. And that probably is like zero. This is pretty, pretty insane that they put this segment out. And again, it should really tell you something. There are so many neighborhoods that are flattened. Palestinians that are internally displaced will simply have no homes to return to. And while we get a first-hand look at the destruction here, it's important to remember that Palestinian journalists do not have this access. They have been pushed to the south. Dozens have been killed. There's this false narrative about Palestinian journalists. More than 100 of them have been killed by Israel since the war began. And I take very few positions in the conflicts that we covered. Let this be a position that I take. Journalists, specifically Palestinian journalists, must be protected amid the war. The Israelis have killed journalists in drone strikes. They've killed them with small arms fire. And it's unacceptable. All right, like I said, I found that, I mean, a little heart-wrenching, obviously, but I found it pretty amazing that Fox even aired that. So obviously their kinship with their fellow journalists kind of trumped, no pun intended, their stance and coverage. That's interesting, though. I I still, I'm very surprised they even aired that. All right, next, I want to read you this tweet from Patrick Bet David. I've talked about this guy a few times. He's got his own podcast, the PBD podcast. 
that thing is like blown up big time. And man, his, his, his whole, his whole world is going very well. And, you know, my hat's off to him. A couple things I disagree with him on, but overall, you know, he does put out some good content and this was an interesting tweet he put out. He said, the Diddy tapes will be used to control a lot of famous voices. You'll be seeing a lot of celebrities and influential people endorsing Kamala out of the blue. All the people in those tapes are now owned. They'll be slaves to the government forever. So again, he's talking about the Diddy tapes and saying, you know, you're going to see random celebrity influential voices out of the blue, you know, advocating for Kamala. And then all the people in those tapes are slaves to the government forever. Pretty interesting. And I will tell you, the first one that has become super somewhat apparent to me is Mark Cuban. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with Mark Cuban, but man, he is making the rounds. And I honestly, I can't even remember if I talked about this before or not, but he is so visceral and vitriol. I like using those two words together against Trump and against Elon Musk in a, in a big way. Initially I was like, okay, dude is basically just irrelevant now because those two have like taken his place again. I think I've said that before, but more than anything, I mean, it's, it's really ramped up since the Diddy stuff. And there's, there's a few things he's been on a few different podcasts and I've listened to all of them. He was on, actually he was on the all in podcast with those four guys which he was totally unhinged on. I'm going to pull some clips from that. He was on Vivek's podcast, which again, he came off terrible. And then he was on Patrick Bet Davis podcast. And ironically, Patrick Bet David put that tweet out after the Cuban episode aired and he's been railing on Cuban pretty hard. So I think, I think that tweet was not intended for Cuban, but Cuban was the, the first person along those lines. So so keep an eye out, keep an eye out for, you know, the random celebrity, super influential person that all of a sudden starts advocating like crazy for Kamala. I'll tell you the other one I've seen is Howard Stern. Now, I think Howard Stern's railed against Trump for a while, maybe since 2016, which is ironic because back in the day, like Howard Stern loved the Trump and like he had Trump on so many times. I remember there was like a clip with Ivanka and Donald on there. I'll try to go back and pull that as well. But that's the second super kind of influential name I've seen, you know, come to the forefront on this stuff. And, and there are links to, I, I looked it up. I was like, did Howard Stern attend Diddy parties? And yeah, there's a ton of pictures of Howard Stern at these Diddy parties, the freak offs. That's funny that they're referred to as freak offs. So anyway, Howard Stern's another one. Mark Cuban's another one. Keep an eye out, see what they say. And then let's see who else comes out of the, comes out of the baby oil woodworks. All right. Last clip for today. I'll keep this one to like 20 minutes. Cause I know that last one was a long one. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting, well, not interesting, unfortunate, what it feels like is like crazy censorship going on on the social media stuff, which makes sense as we get closer, I mean, in the final stretch of the election. But there's a lot of censorship that's going on and a lot of accounts are like just getting completely wiped out, you know, without any warning or without any real notice to them. There's a few that I followed and they were just gone. And then I found a way to reach out to the content creator. And I said, what happened? They're like, no idea. Woke up account was gone. So anyway, give this a listen to Hillary Clinton. And then my main man, Kaizen, whom, man, I love this guy. I really do. He is so nuanced and he's got such a nice way of, uh, articulating things gives his take after on what Hillary said, but this is from maybe two weeks ago. And it's been a, a, a theme that Hillary is like hammered home for the past several months, but give this a listen and decide for yourself if you think it's appropriate or if you don't, I'm going to, I'm going to take you out on this call a spade a spade and we'll talk to you soon. 
for our Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda uh, and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrent. Allow me to share with you what's happening to free speech all across the world right now. The Brazilian and Venezuelan governments banned access to X for all of their citizenry. In France, they arrested the CEO of Telegram for illicit activities happening on the platform. In the UK, the government announced that they're going to start arresting people for misinformation on the internet. Mark Zuckerberg disclosed that during COVID-19, the government pressured Facebook to take down posts that they considered misinformation about the pandemic. In 2022, when Elon bought Twitter, we got proof that the government was selectively targeting conservative voices and censoring them too. Here's this recent headline from the New York Times talking about how the Constitution might be a threat to America. Free speech is one of those abstract things that is hard to value until you don't have it anymore. You can't have free speech without bad speech. You can't have free speech without hate speech. You cannot have free speech without misinformation. And the solution isn't to selectively censor people, it's to educate people so that they can discern fact from fiction themselves. Many of the people who are calling for censorship of misinformation do have good intentions. But isn't that exactly what the road to hell is paved with? That was a great way to end it. This episode was brought to you by the new book, Deep Shallow Dive Into You, available now on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hardcover and paperback. Don't forget to sign up for our new mailing list on our website at deepshallowdive.com.